Good afternoon, it's the 7th of January 2017. I'm David Wiegener, I'm here in my home in Christchurch, New Zealand and this is week 8 that I've been doing, um, doing this online and this is week 8 and um, number 6 even though I've done more on the day so it's the 6th day of week 8 even though I've also done a little bit less too because sometime I've had a burglary here so that put me out a wee bit anyway um, firstly I want to do an erratum for yesterday's um, <coughs> words about um, Korchnoi was playing carp um, Korchnoi was playing Spassky I've already said it Korchnoi was playing Spassky ok I was incorrect it wasn't Korchnoi playing Spassky it was um, Korchnoi playing Karpov and that match was in 1978 and I thought it was about 1980 or something like that even 86 as well but it was a bit late I said so anyway um, that was that was um, an erratum for yesterday's video even though I do lots of um, mistakes and all that sort of thing that sort of thing I don't want to get wrong okay this game that you see in front of you was played between our Kotov again, Alexander Kotov and, <laughs> and Baksa again, uh, the same one um, and so this was in Stockholm so obviously he's getting a few games with this guy in Stockholm, um, 1952 and Kotov is white and he writes on page 86 of the Genesis of Combinations I was firmly convinced that I stood far better with a strongly centralised position in contrast to Black's passive setup. His knight on a7 there being conspicuously out of play. It's not too bad though. As a matter of course, a master immediately considers possibilities such as knight takes c6, and knight d5. And by the way, any intermediate move by black with bishop takes um, bishop after knight takes pawn is met by knight takes queen and queen takes bishop check so knight takes queen and queen takes bishop check also if knight c6 knight c6 knight d5 bishop c3 no good because of knight takes queen check or knight e7 knight e7 taken back and queen takes bishop winning material for white as a matter of course Ma master immediately considers possibilities such as knight c6 I'm just recapping here followed by knight d5 or playing a knight to f5 playing a knight to f5 one or the other but it is quite another matter to work these ideas out into detail which is true and fair enough the move knight d5 f knight d f5 in particular excited my imagination okay so I'm pausing there just to hear that Kotov was excited by knight d f5. Because several positional, sorry, I was thinking it was possible, several positional factors were linked to the obvious tactical virtues. 
Black's important dark squared bishop is eliminated straight away, thus denuding his king and increasing the power of white's bishop on c3. The knight on f5 will be extremely active. White's queen, queen can infiltrate via g5 and finally black's position will remain without any real counterplay. Surely sufficient factors to make the sacrifice almost intuitively Surely sufficient factors <coughs> to make the sacrifice almost intuitively, but I began calculating specific variations in order to make sure there was no surprise in store for me. So he writes now you can do some of this in your head, that's good for you. Knight d f5, I've, I've watched um, some other grand, um, some other people doing um, opening tra traps and all that sort of thing on the uh, internet and all that sort of thing and I'm pleased to see that they make mistakes worth um, mentioning what the piece is and all that sort of thing as well. So I was very very happy and chuffed about that. I was chuffed as anything. Okay, so anyway we can go in your head, you can go knight d f5 for one, the first move for white, g f, knight f5. Now then black is asking, is asked the question, where to for my queen after that? Where do I actually play my queen? The obvious queen e6 fails to bishop g7. Knight g7, queen g5, threatening mate. <laughs> it's not obvious though. Queen e5, knight h6 check, king h8, queen e5, d e, rook d8. I'm going to show you all this soon. Rook d8, knight f7, and knight d8 winning easily. Okay, now I'll show you that now. Knight d f5. Chomp, chomp. Now, as I said before, if bishop takes here first, then just knight takes queen. So this fails to this, 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 what else? There's nothing else. Now he can't go, black cannot go here because of the skewer knight e7 check thereby winning the, the queen but white has to defend, black has to defend this here you see so the black goes here then here happens check okay then the king has to move here and then the queen takes the queen and there's nothing else for black to do I mean black can be silly but it wouldn't be advised takes here then here now there's nothing else for black to do short of rook here or something like that so they take back and take here king here nothing else knight takes rook and white has the piece um, advantage here for the um, the, um, the 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 material favors um, white in this case now white immediately springs to mind this move here for white and rook to d7 thereby going to the proper square for the rook But it is black's turn at the moment. But what does black do here? What does actually black do here? Um, could go here. Oh, it must be. It's saying it's um, not possible now. I think it was thinking I was going here. Black can go here. And white can, if they like, they can... Um, they can tie up here this position here 
and thereby establish a knight on here that cannot be contested by a knight to here to here it can almost not be um, contested even though this pawn can play here and this this pawn can play here to a5 a3 can just support the b pawn here and a knight can sit here quite comfortably and await an opportune moment to um, do attacks on this pawn here by knight f7 as long as it's um, all right for black to white to do that but um, that's what I would be aimed for plus the rook in here and into this 7th rank which rooks on the 7th rank love rooks love being on the 7th rank ok so here we've got this position and uh, it's pretty finished so we'll go back to the start On d7, the queen will later be attacked by rook d6. So we'll just go over that for your sakes. So on d7, The queen will later be attacked by rook d6 after this is white's move I would say first possibly uh, I'm just wondering that actually black can't white can go here then black can play this and then you can go here I don't know I'm starting to muck it up already because if here then black can go here and try and um, so let's say say do I really um, no, I'm not sure exactly there might be similar to the game so they say anyway here in this position Black's only got queen c7 is the only move that comes into consideration. What then? Um, Kotov asks. In most lines, the defence by f6 <coughs> seemed perfectly adequate. So the idea of preventing this by knight g7, knight g7, bishop f6, suddenly occurred to me, and I think that's what he played. So he went knight g7 after pawn takes, after g5. Knight f5, threatening the check again with the um, taking the queen. Queen c7, knight g7, knight g7, bishop f6. Suddenly occurred to me, but what would not give this black time to defend? But would not this give black time to defend against queen g5 by playing knight e6 at once? I then worked out a win by f4. Rook f e8. Okay, we're going to go over all that. Just fair enough, but f4 looks very, very strong to me. Rook f8. If 
if h6 f5 knight g bishop g5 hg queen h5 g5 I mean and obviously the rook f4 move next move to go bang checkmating or winning major material for white we'll have a look at this queen g5 then black has to go king here here's no good because it's instant loss as soon as that rook goes to h4 checkmate so this one rook here f6 rook here queen here rook takes oh we've just seen something king takes queen check and then <laughs> the long term variation is comes another rook and if rook here, that's very bad because queen h6 mate. Checkmate. Checkmate. Okay, so that's some of the analysis. So that's for h6. So we're going back to f4, rook fe8. Okay, won't let me do that. Queen e6. That's not very good, is it? Queen C7. I worked out yesterday about what's happening with the castle. And is <coughs> I'm putting the position set up, and it, go, it says does White Castle, Queen side or King side in the questions when I'm setting up the position. So I've worked that out now. Took me a while though. So got rook f, uh, hold on, we've got knight f5, queen c7, knight g7, knight g7, bishop f6, Knight e6, of course. And then we've got f4. Very, very, very sort of like in white and black's face. Just sort of really homing the, the picture down. It's an immediate threat of f5, and it's very, very difficult for black to meet. Black plays rook f8. Not the actual game, but black plays this. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. See, as soon as this rook is taken, just queen takes knight, and the big threat always gets through. The, the pawns held back from entering into the defence with the rook and the queen along this file here so that white would have probably only a draw or so even though there are lines for white to play here but this is um, what I like about Kotov is um, I see this straight away I see this one, knight g5 and queen g5, check. So if here, I see this straight away, bang, that's all over. Because either it's um, checkmate on the spot, or it's that and it's <laughs> checkmate. So now I'll just go back a little bit here. Okay, right, whatever. Rook f4, h6. Rook g4, a bit more statistic. Rook f4, oh, sorry, I made 
Rook G4. Queen, King H7. <laughs> Did it this way. <laughs> That's even more bit, better than my one. Is Rook H4, mate. This pretty finish encouraged me to examine the position more deeply. So I began to examine the line. Um, we're going to go back to... Okay. Going back to Bishop F6, King H8. Queen H6. Look at this. Isn't this guy... But what I'm saying... Yeah, that's right. What I'm saying I like about Kotov is I looked at... Um, I looked at a position. I looked at a, a game... A book I really like from Kotov and Kerry's is all about defending and everything like that. And it keeps on... I think I've already spoken about it. And that's one of my favourite books. That's right. But they keep on swinging in roundabouts. Um, black's better, white's better, black's better, white's better, black's better, white's better. Every time they analyse it out and they say, oh yeah, black's got a one position. Oh no, white's got a one position. Oh no, after they play another couple of moves, no, black's got a one position and so on. And so that's what I really like about that. And so he really knows how to defend, you see. So he's got this position here, which is his sort of starting position. Now white could just take this rook and um, and then but then black can just merely take this rook back with the rook and not the queen because then white would have the rook takes pawn. But that's not exactly what happens anyway. Now, now Kotov writes, now the plan of f4 to f5 seemed too slow as it would allow black to counter-attack in the centre. But what about advancing the h-pawn to h6? Beautiful. In order to exploit the pin of the knight. The same continuation shows the practical application of all this as follows. So now we go back to move 1. GF. So this is the actual game now. Knight f5. And notice that that Bazaar Baza plays the move that um, that he thought was best. He goes here, you see, not here. He goes queen g5, saving time. Because the h pawn wants to run all the way down. And look, it just looks like black is helpless. How infuriating would h4 be to meet as black? So black tries to run away and also now see this rook e5 now is played and white merely takes it and takes it and then goes Boom! And how is black to progress here?
thereby plane here blocks off the rook d8 check after pawn takes knight or um or or the more sadistic if it was white's move here white has this move you see because only black can take it with queen d8 else this is the threat queen takes knight checkmate if the rook takes the rook then it's just queen g7 not pawn takes g7 or h g7 because then the king escapes to g8 and black all of a sudden has a one game they piece up so this is um this is just pinning forking everything and these are the pins beautifully deflecting um if the queen takes now then white has this not this because white is then lost but here deflecting the protection of the rook on the queen by forcing rook takes here obviously we're not going to talk about king takes pawn even though my sister would play it queen takes king and that's the end of the game officially so black only has rook g7 this this and bang it's all over so anyway we'll go back to I don't know why that's not showing up on my computer is correct knight c8 h6 knight e7 and look at this move look how beautiful this move is this is a master completely look at that at rook d2 and you know what's coming now what's black going to do what can black do you know um oh dear so say for instance black goes here or maybe by this time black would want to play this but it's not um to shut the default off this one and we've got this again so that won't do and then uh, if knight here then depending on how you want to do it you can either go um, rook takes knight thereby you're threatening black with queen g7 checkmate unstoppable unstoppable absolutely black is all tied up everywhere but we'll go back to d2 now what does black do now nothing because white's only just threatening this he can play this here but that's rather foolhardy because the um the pawn just takes here and then we start marching this pawn or whatever but um now black's um black's lost we probably take this pawn here actually so the the pawn can move here march this here now do not take this off because that gives black the f6 um move to alleviate some of the pressure but not that it's March. I'm not doing that. Can go. Um, yeah, I don't. Black can just. White's got. White's having a field day here. Because black's just tied up something rotten. Um, he can also go. Rock here, rock here, rock here. So that's an envelope attack. If I've ever seen one from that's what Nimbusovich says about 
that's an envelope attack. Um, so, um, but he can't. <laughs> he can't because um, Queen here defends for a few moments. See, even in this position, white can just go here, here, and here, okay, here, and it's all over now, baby blue, isn't it? So, it's absolutely just a brilliant, brilliant position that, um, and it's, it's another one of my favourites. See, I told you I haven't got any favourite friends. Uh, I used to. I used to have a best friend. But now, now I've got um, lots of best friends. They're all best friends for different reasons. It's like my sons. I haven't got any um, favourite sons. But I have favourite things about them all. But I haven't actually got any of my sons, even ones who have special needs. Um... Uh, He's my favourite, but so are the other two sons I've got. So anyway, that's um, the game for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. And uh, I enjoyed watching um, with excitement that other chess players around the world make the same mistakes as I do with regards to... Well, we all make the same mistakes. We all sort of like blunder pieces and why did I do that sort of thing? What the heck's happened? Why did I lose this? But this is absolutely huge for white now, this position. I could go over and um, I've been, I've been, I found out today that if you've got a question or something that you don't understand, which is fair enough because I don't, a lot of things in chess I don't understand. But if you've got a question or if you've got a particular interest that you want me to um, analyse something for you, um, you can just make a comment to me. And once I look at my notifications, I will see that you've asked this question and I will duly answer it at uh, my leisure as well as whenever I get round to it, if I see it. So anyway, you're quite welcome to do that. And I, I welcome you to do, to I open that idea up to you, and also I say that um, I really do love doing this. It's just really fun, and really great, and all that sort of thing. And I, I, I intend to go to a lightning tournament in Wellington uh, next week, which is the New Zealand Lightning Champs. But I do know. That I don't play three minute plus two second increments very well, as opposed to um, even though I do quite well, I beat the international master. But I do know that I play five minute chess better than I play um, than I play um, three minute chess plus two seconds increments. Because of obvious reasons, it's less time. So anyway, that's my lesson for the day, and um, so and that's the first week of 2007. I hope you're enjoying these, and I am very very happy to hear comments on the internet, to hear people um, talking to me. I say, oh, I thought you said you suck at chess, or something to that effect, or maybe I've got a heckler. Who knows? But anyway, it's all good. Um, the thing is, is um, they've also had my videos have also been recommended. Some of them, or a couple of them, or one, or something like that. So I really, really welcome you to um, recommend my videos. I'd be very, very happy if you do. But you might want to keep it quiet so that no one else finds out about it. Anyway, so... Quickly speaking, I'm going to be very quick and then I'm going to close, <coughs> um, believe it or not. Um, and probably that should be my, um, that should be my wee saying on here, believe it or not, Ripley's believe it or not. Um, I'm going to close with saying, and what was I going to say now? 
<laughs> I can't remember. Oh goodness. I'm going to close with something or <laughs> something. I was going to say something. Anyway, I can't quite remember. Um, yeah, okay. I'll leave it at that. And I'll probably remember straight away. But I did enjoy this um, this video. And so I, I love your feedback. So you can keep it quiet, but I love your feedback. Thank you very much.